The Godavari is India's second longest river after the Ganga. Its source is in Triambakeshwar, Maharashtra. It flows east for 1465 kilometers, 910 miles, draining the states of Maharashtra 48.6%, Telangana 18.8%, .8 Andhra Pradesh 4.5%, Chhattisgarh 10.9%, Madhya Pradesh 10.0%, Odisha 5.7%, Karnataka 1.4% and Puducherry Yanam and emptying into Bay of Bengal through its extensive network of tributaries. Measuring up to 312,812 square kilometers, 120,777 square miles, it forms one of the largest river basins in the Indian subcontinent with only the Ganges and Indus rivers having a larger drainage basin. In terms of length, catchment area and discharge, the Godavari River is the largest in peninsular India and had been dubbed as the Dakshina Ganga Ganges of the South. The river has been revered in Hindu scriptures for many millennia and continues to harbor and nourish a rich cultural heritage. In the past few decades, the river has been barricaded by a number of barrages and dams, restricting its flow. The river delta supports 729 persons per square kilometer nearly twice the density average for the nation, and has been categorized as having substantial to greater risk of flooding with rising sea levels. <laughs> Source The Godavari originates in the western Ghats of central India near Nashik in Maharashtra, 80 kilometers (50 miles) from the Arabian Sea. It flows for 1,465 kilometers (910 miles) first eastwards across the Deccan Plateau, then turns southeast, entering the West Godavari district and East Godavari district of Andhra Pradesh, until it splits into two distributaries that widen into a large river delta and flow into the Bay of Bengal. The Godavari River has a coverage area of 312,812 square kilometers (120,777 square miles), which is nearly one tenth of the area of India and is greater than the areas of England and Ireland put together. The river basin is considered to be divided into three sections. Upper source to confluence with Mandira. Middle between confluence of Mandira and Pranhita and Lower Pranhita confluence to mouth. These put together account for 24.2% of the total basin area. The river's annual average water inflows are nearly 110 billion cubic meters. Nearly 50% of the water availability is being harnessed. The water allocation from the river among the riparian states are governed by the Godavari Water Disputes Tribunal. The river has highest flood flows in India and experienced recorded flood of 3.6 million cusecs in the year 1986 and annual flood of 1.0 million cusecs as normal. Within Maharashtra. In Maharashtra state where it takes origin, the river has an extensive course, the upper basin origin to its confluence with Manjira of which lies entirely within the state, cumulatively draining an area as large as 152,199 square kilometers, 58,764 square miles, about half the area of Maharashtra. Within Nashik district the river assumes a north-easterly course till it flows into the Gangapur reservoir created by a dam of the same name. The reservoir along with the Kashapai Dam provides potable water to Nashik, one of the largest cities located on its banks. The river as it emerges through the dam, some 8 kilometers miles upstream from Nashik, flows on a rocky bed undulated by a series of chasms and rocky ledges, resulting in the formation of two significant waterfalls, the Gangapur Waterfalls and the Someshwar Waterfalls, the latter, located at Someshwar and more popularly known as the Dudsagar Waterfall about 10 kilometers miles east of Gangapur the river passes the town of Nashik where it collects its effluents in the form of the river Nasardi on its right bank. About 0.5 kilometers (0.31 miles) south direction from Nashik, the river bends sharply to the east, washing the base of a high cliff formerly the site of a Mughal fort, but which is now being eaten away by the action of floods. About 25 kilometers (16 miles) below Nashik is the confluence of the Godavari and one of its tributaries, the Darna River. The stream occupies, for nine months in the year, a small space in a wide and gravelly bed, the grayish banks being 4 to 6 meters 13 to 20 feet high, topped with a deep layer of black soil. 
A few kilometers after its meeting with the Dharna, the Godavari swerves to the northeast, till the Banganga, from the northwest, meets it on the left. The course of the main stream then tends more decidedly south. At Nandar Madmeshwar, the Kadva, a second large affluent, brings considerable increase to the waters of the Godavari. The river begins its southeasterly course characteristic of rivers of the Deccan Plateau. The river beyond exits the Nifad Taluka of Nashik and enter the Kapargaon Taluka, Ahmednagar district. Within Ahmednagar the river quickly completes its short course, flowing alongside the town of Kapargaon and reaching Puntumba. Beyond this the river has been deployed as a natural boundary between the following districts. Ahmednagar and Aurangabad, along the boundary here, it receives its first major tributary Pravara River, draining the former district, the confluence located at Pravarasangam. By virtue of a sub-tributary of Pravara, Mandahal, which originates in Pune district, the basin impinges the Pune district. The river at Pathan has been impounded by the Jayakwadi Dam forming the Nithsagar Reservoir. Kalsubai located in Godavari Basin, is the highest peak in Maharashtra. Bede and Jalna Bede and Parvani, located along here is its merger with Sinfana, an important tributary which drains a considerably large area within Bede. The sub-tributary river Bindusara forms a landmark at Bede, the river beyond, near the village Sanpath, flows into Parvani. Its course is relatively non-significant except for receiving two smaller streams, Indriyani and Masuli, merging at its left and right banks respectively. Within the last taluka of the district Parvani, Purna, the river drains a major tributary of the same name. Purnay then exits into the neighboring district of Nanded where 10 km miles before reaching the town Nanded, is impounded by the Vishnupuri Dam and thus with it, bringing Asia's largest lift irrigation projects to life. A little downstream from Nanded, the river receives ASNA, a small stream, on its left bank. It then runs into the controversial Babli project soon ends its course within Maharashtra, albeit temporarily, at its merger with a major tributary, Manjira. The river after flowing into Telangana, re-emerges to run as a state boundary separating the Manchurial, Telangana from Gadchiroli, Maharashtra. At the state border, it runs between Saransha and Somnor Sangam receiving one tributary at each of those nodal points, the Pranhita and subsequently the Indravati. Topic. Within Telangana Godavari enters into Telangana in Nizamabad district at Kandakirthi where Manjira, Haridra rivers joins Godavari and forms Triveni Sangamam. The river flows along the border between Nirmal and Manchurial districts in the north and Nizamabad, Jagityal, Pedapali districts to its south. About 12 kilometers (7.5 miles) after entering Telangana, it merges with the back waters of the Sriram Sagar Dam. The river, after emerging through the dam gates, enjoys a wide river bed, often splitting to encase sandy islands. The river receives a minor but significant tributary Kadam River. It then emerges at its eastern side to act as state border with Maharashtra only to later enter into Bhadradri Kothagudam district. In this district the river flows through an important Hindu pilgrimage town, Bhadrachalam. The river further swells after receiving a minor tributary Kanarasani River and exits into Andhra Pradesh. <laughs> Within Andhra Pradesh Within the state of Andhra Pradesh, it flows through hilly terrain of the eastern Ghats known as the Papi Hills which explains the narrowing of its bed as it flows through a gorge for a few km, only to re-widen at Polavaram. Before crossing the Papi Hills, it receives its last major tributary Sabari River on its left bank. The river upon reaching the plains begins to widen out until it reaches Rajamundri. Arma Khanda or Jindagata Peak 1680 meters 5510 feet above MSL located near Paderu is the highest peak in the Godavari River basin as well as in eastern Ghats after crossing Rajamundri the Godavari splits into two branches which are called Virada Gautami Gautami Godavari and Vasishta Godavari again the Gautami branch splits into two branches namely Gautami and Nilareva similarly the Vasishta splits into two branches named Vasishta and Vainateya these four branches which join the Bay of Bengal at different places, are forming a delta of length 170 km 110 miles along the coast of the Bay of Bengal and is called the Konasima region. This delta along with the delta of the Krishna River is called the Rice Granary of South India.
Topic tributaries The major tributaries of the river can be classified as the left bank tributaries which include the Purna, Pranhita, Indravati and Sabari river covering nearly 59.7% of the total catchment area of the basin and the right bank tributaries Pravara, Manjira, Manair together contributing 16.1% of the basin. Pranhita is the largest tributary covering about 34% of its drainage basin. Though the river proper flows only for 113 kilometers 70 miles, by virtue of its extensive tributaries Warda, Wanganga, Penganga, the sub-basin drains all of Vidarbha region as well as the southern slopes of the Satpura ranges. Indravati is the second largest tributary, known as the lifeline of the Kalahandi, Nabarangapur of Odisha and Bastar district of Chhattisgarh. Due to their enormous sub-basins both Indravati and Pranhita are considered rivers in their own right. Manjira is the longest tributary and holds the Nizam Sagar Reservoir. Purna is a prime river in the water-scarce Marathwada region of Maharashtra. Other than these seven principal ones, it has many smaller but significant ones draining into it. Indravati River flood waters overflows into the Juranala which is part of Sabari Basin. A barrage at 19 degrees 7 minutes 19 seconds north 82 degrees 14 minutes 9 seconds east is constructed across the Indravati River to divert Indravati water into Sabari River for enhanced hydro power generation. <inaudible> <inaudible> Religious significance The river is sacred to Hindus and has several places on its banks, that have been places of pilgrimage for thousands of years. Amongst the huge numbers of people who have bathed in her waters as a rite of cleansing are said to have been the deity Baladeva 5000 years ago and the Saint Chaitanya Mahaprabhu 500 years ago. Every 12 years, Pushkaram Fair is held on the banks of the river. A legend has it that the sage Gautama lived in the Brahmagiri hills at Triambakeshwar with his wife Ahalya. The couple lived the rest of their lives in the then village called Govuru, known as Kovor Kau, since the British rule. Ahalya lived in a nearby place called Thagami, now Thagami. The sage, as a reason for the practice of Anadanam, giving away food to the needy, started cultivating rice crops and other crops. Once, the god Ganesha, on the wish of the Munis, sent a miraculous cow Maya Denu, which resembled a normal cow. It entered the sage's abode and started spoiling the rice while he was meditating. Since cattle is sacred to Hindus and shall always be treated with respect, he put the darba grass on the cow. But, to his surprise, it fell dead. Seeing what happened before their eyes, the Munis and their wives cried out, We thought that Gautama Maharishi is a righteous man, but he committed bovicide killing of a cow or cattle. The sage wished to atone for this grievous sin. Therefore, he went to Nashik and observed tapas to Lord Triambakeshwara a manifestation of the god Shiva, on the advice of the Munis, praying for atonement and asking him to make the Ganges flow over the cow. Shiva was pleased with the sage and diverted the Ganges which washed away the cow and gave rise to the Godavari River in Nashik. The water stream flowed past Kovor and ultimately merged with the Bay of Bengal. Settlements along the Godavari Maharashtra Nashik Holy city and site of Simhastha Kumbha Mela bathing festivals Trimbakeshwar shrine to the Jyotirlinga of the god Shiva Kapargaon Puntumba, a place of pilgrimage with a number of ancient temples including the last resting place Samadhi of San Changdev in Puntumba. Pathan, ancient capital of the Satavahana dynasty. Gangot. Nanded, location of the Hazar Sahib Nanded Sikh Gurdwara. Sarancha, town situated near the confluence of Godavari and Pranahita rivers. Topic: <laughs> Telangana. Basara, Nirmal district, Nana Saraswati Temple, Gudam Gudda, Adilabad Temple, Luxadipet, Adilabad, Manchurial, Manchurial, Godavarikani, Ramagundam, Pedapali, Nirmal, Nirmal district, Nirmal Toys, Chenor, Adilabad, Tadpakal, Nizamabad, Armor Toys, Badapur, Nizamabad, Armor Toys, 
Dharmapuri, Telangana, Dharmapuri, Karamnagar, Narasimha Swami Temple, Godavarikani, Ramagundam, Sripada Yelampali Project, Mantani, Petapali District, Godameshwara Swami, Shiva Temple, Sri Rama, Sarswati Temples, Kaleshwaram, Jayashankar Bhupalpali District, Kalaswara Muktaswara Swami, Shiva Temple, Mahadevpur Jayashankar Bhupalpali District. Itarunagaram, Jayashankar Bhupalpali District, Bhadrachalam, Bhadradri Kothagudam District. Andhra Pradesh Rajamundri, East Godavari, Shri Katailingaswara Alayam, Mukteshwaram, East Godavari, Shri K. Shaina Muktaswara Swamivari Devalayam, Ravulapalam, East Godavari. Dalswaram, East Godavari, where the Akanda Godavari splits into two streams called Gautami and Vashista, before joining Bay of Bengal. Kotipali, East Godavari, Sri Somaswaraswami Variyalayam. Antarvedi, East Godavari. Antarvedi is famous for the Sri Lakshmi Narasimhaswami Vari Mandiram, constructed between the 15th and 16th centuries. There is also a temple of Lord Shiva that is older than Narasimha Swami Temple. The temple's idol of Lord Shiva was installed by Lord Srirama. Pulavaram, West Godavari, Sri Bhadrakali Samitha Sri Viraswaraswami Vari Mandiram. Padasima, West Godavari, Sri Virabhadraswami Vari Devalayam. Kovor, West Godavari, Sundaraswaraswami Vari Alayam. Talapudi, West Godavari. Narsapur, West Godavari. Topic. Puducherry Yanam Yanam is an enclave located in East Godavari district, where the Gautami joins Bay of Bengal. It belongs to Puducherry Union territory. Topic. Places of interest Sites of pilgrimage include Basar originally, Vyasara Sri Gyana Saraswati Temple is situated on the banks of Godavari in Adilabad district, Telangana. It is about 210 kilometers 130 miles from state capital Hyderabad and accessible by road and rail nearest major station, Nizamabad, although Basar station also exists. It is considered that the sage Vyasa wrote the Mahabharata on the banks of Godavari at this location near Harsha House it is the beautiful scenario, and thus the place came to be known as Vyasara. Kandakirthi, Thrivani Sangamam where three rivers join. Godavari, Manjira River and Haridra River. Bhadrachalam, Hindu Temple of Lord Rama. Dharmapuri, Telangana, Hindu Temple of Lord Narasimha. Godavari flows from north to south in Dharmapuri, hence the river is locally called Dakshina Vahini south flowing. Kaleshwaram, Sri Kalaswara Muktaswara Swami Temple is situated here on the banks of Triveni Sangamam of rivers Godavari and Pranahita. It is 125 km away from Karamnagar city, 115 km away from Warangal city. Trimbakashwar, one of the twelve Jyotirlingas and ancient temple of Lord Shiva. Nanded, Takht Shri Hazar Sahib, one of the five most sacred places in Sikhism. Nashik, one of the four Sinhistha Kumbh Mela, Hindu pilgrimage place. Pathan, St. Eknath's native place, famous Jayakwadi Dam, and a beautiful garden named after San Dnyanwineshwar. Antarvedi, East Godavari Antarvedi is famous for the Lakshmi Narasimha Swami temple constructed between the 15th and 16th centuries. There is also a temple of Lord Shiva that is older than Narasimha Swami temple. The temple's idol of Lord Shiva was installed by Lord Srirama. Konasima, delta of Godavari. Padasima, a village where a Hindu temple is located on a small hill on an island in the river. Kovor, a village where cows resided and a place where the Maya Denu fell dead. Footprints of the Maya Denu were seen even today in the famous place Kovor called Goshpadakshetram also called Gopadala Revu, where the footprints of the holy cow are seen near the temple of Lord Shiva. Also a village which is the reason for the birth of River Godavari. Famous for a Sanskrit school which has been built 63 years back. Rajamundri, a town known for its role in Telugu culture and birthplace of writers such as Nanaya, one of the Kavitrayam trinity of poets who translated the Mahabharata into Telugu. 
The Godavari Pushkaralu is a major local festival that is staged every 12 years. Araku Valley which is a popular hill station in Vishakhapatnam district. Lambasingi Hill Station known for snowfall during winter season in Vishakhapatnam district. Diamali Peak located in the Godavari Basin is the highest peak 1,672 meters MSL in Odisha state. Flora and fauna The Krishna Godavari Basin is one of the main nesting sites of the endangered olive ridley sea turtle. Godavari is also a home to the endangered fringed lipped carp The Koringa mangrove forests in the Godavari Delta are the second largest mangrove formation in the country. Part of this has been declared as the Koringa Wildlife Sanctuary, renowned for reptiles. They also provide an important habitat to a wide variety of fish and crustaceans. These forests also act as barriers against cyclones, tropical storms, and storm surges, thus protecting the nearby villages. The Jayakwadi Bird Sanctuary is another haven for birds located near the town of Pathan spread across the back waters of the Nithsagar Reservoir formed by impounding the Godavari by the massive Jayakwadi Dam. Its 341 square kilometers area is dotted by islands within the reservoir which serve as nesting sites for the birds. The Nandarmadmeshwar Bird Sanctuary is located along the back waters of the Godavari River near Nashik at its confluence with Kadva River. It is known as the Bharatpur of Maharashtra for the wide diversity of bird life that it harbors. The following are few other wildlife sanctuaries located in the river basin. Waterfalls Daduma Waterfalls is 175 metres 574 feet high and one of the highest waterfalls in southern India. It is located on the Saleru River which forms boundary between Andhra Pradesh and Odisha states. The following are few other waterfalls located in the river basin. Crossings. There are four bridges spanning the river between East Godavari and West Godavari districts. Old Godavari Bridge, also known as Havelock Bridge, and named after then Madras Governor. Godavari Bridge, also known as Rail Kum Road Bridge and Kovor Rajamundri Bridge. Godavari Arch Bridge, also known as New Railway Bridge. Fourth Bridge, also known as New Road Bridge, Old Godavari Bridge. Construction of this bridge started in 1876 and was completed in 1897. It was constructed under the supervision of F. T. Granville Walton, who had constructed the Dufferin Bridge over the Ganges, and Granville Mills, both British engineers. Spanning over three kilometers in length, it linked the East Godavari and West Godavari districts. The bridge has been a vital link, enabling trains to run between Chennai and Howrah. Trains continued over the bridge for a century until 1997, when train services over the bridge were suspended after the construction of two additional bridges. Godavari Bridge construction of this bridge started in 1970, and was completed in 1974. It serves as both a railway and a roadway between the East Godavari and West Godavari districts. Godavari Arch Bridge This bridge was completed in 1997, was built upstream of the earlier bridges. Fourth Bridge This bridge is the newest. It was opened to public from Godavari Pushkaras 2015. This is a road connectivity bridge link supposed to ease traffic flow between Rajamundri and Kovor. Dams The main Godavari River up to the confluence with Pranhita tributary is dammed fully to utilize the available water for irrigation. However, its main tributaries Pranhita, Indravati and Sabari which join in the lower reaches of the basin, carry three times more water compared to main Godavari. In 2015, the water surplus Godavari River is linked to the water deficit Krishna River by commissioning the Polavaram right bank canal with the help of Patasima lift scheme to augment water availability to the Prakasam barrage located in Andhra Pradesh. More dams are constructed in the Godavari River basin than in any other river basin of India. The following are the few dams located in the river basin. 
Gangapur Dam, this is a large earth fill dam with gross water storage of 215.88 million cubic meters, and located 10 kilometers .2 miles upstream from Nashik city. The reservoir known as the Gangapur Band Sagar provides drinking water to the Nashik city and also supplies water to the thermal power station situated downstream at Eklahare. Jayakwadi Dam, located near Pathan, it is one of the largest earthen dams in India. This dam was built to address the dual problems of flooding along the banks, during monsoon months, and that of drought, rest of the year, in the Marathwada region. Two left and right canals provide the irrigation to fertile land up to Nanded district. This dam has contributed to industrial development of Aurangabad and Jalna, Maharashtra. Mahalgaon Dam is also constructed under Jayakwadi Stage 2 to expand the irrigation potential further in Parvani, Nanded and Bede districts. Vishnupuri Barrage, Asia's largest lift irrigation project, the Vishnupuri Prakalp has been constructed on the river at a distance of 5 km miles from the city Nanded. Gatgar Dam was built for hydro power generation by diverting the water of Pravara tributary outside Godavari River Basin to a west flowing river which joins Arabian Sea. Upper Vitarna Reservoir was built across west flowing Vitarna River merging some part of Godavari River catchment area. Godavari water impounded in this reservoir is diverted outside the river basin for Mumbai city drinking water supply after generating hydro power. Sriram Sagar Dam, this is another multi-purpose project on the Godavari River on the borders of Adilabad and Nizamabad district. It is near the town of Pachampad, 60 km away from Nizamabad. It has been described by the Hindu as a lifeline for a large part of Telangana. It serves the irrigation needs in Karamnagar, Warangal, Adilabad, Nalgonda, and Kamam districts and also generates power. Dowelswaram Barrage was built by Sir Arthur Cotton in 1852. It got damaged in 1987 floods, and rebuilt as a barrage cum roadway soon after and named after him. The roadway connects Dowelswaram in East Godavari and Viaswaram in West Godavari. The irrigation canals of this barrage also form part of National Waterway 4. <laughs> Hydro power stations. The Godavari River is one of the rivers whose water energy is least harnessed for generating hydroelectricity. The 600 MW capacity Upper Indravati Hydro Power Station is the biggest hydro power station which diverts Godavari River water to the Mahanadi River Basin. The following is the list of hydroelectric power stations excluding small and medium installations. Geology and sediment transfer in the Godavari drainage basin The primary, initial catchment of the Godavari drainage basin is largely represented by the basalt of the Deccan volcanic province approximately 50% of the total basin area. This is followed by the Precambrian granites and gneisses of the eastern Darwar Kraton, sandstones, shales and limestones of the Gondwana supergroup, various sedimentary units of Kudapa and Vindian basins, charnakites and condylites of the Proterozoic Eastern Ghats Mobile Belt and the sandstones of the Rajamundri Formation. The Godavari River carries the largest sediment load among the peninsular rivers and the majority of the mass transfer in Godavari occurs during the monsoon. Mineral magnetic studies of the Godavari River sediments suggest that the floodplains in the entire stretch of the river are characterized by a Deccan basalt source. The bed loads on the other hand are of sourced from local bedrock. Influx of Deccan source in the Godavari River up to the Delta regions and possibly in the Bay of Bengal off the Godavari, therefore, can be related to the intensive chemical weathering in the Deccan basalts. Abrupt increase in delta 13 C values and decrease in talc content accompanied with a significant increase in ferromagnetic mineral concentration in Bay of Bengal sediments from approximately 3.2 to 3.1 cal. Ka BP reflected a shift of organic carbon and sediment source and a severe decline in vegetation coverage. Such phenomena indicate intensified deforestation and soil rock erosion in the Deccan Plateau, producing higher ferromagnetic mineral inputs, which is in agreement with significant expansion of agricultural activities in the Deccan Chalcolithic cultural period. 
Topic mineral deposits Godavari River Basin is endowed with rich mineral deposits such as oil and gas, coal, iron, limestone, manganese, copper, bauxite, granite, laterite, etc. The following are the few noted deposits. Topic: <laughs> Ecological concerns. The frequent drying up of the Godavari River in the drier months has been a matter of great concern. Indiscriminate damming along the river has been cited as an obvious reason. Within Maharashtra sugarcane irrigation has been blamed as one of the foremost causes. In 2013, the river was at its all-time low in the Nizamabad district of Telangana. This had hit the growth of fish, making the life of fishermen miserable. The water level was so low that people could easily walk into the middle of the river. Shortage in rainfall and closure of the controversial Babli project gates in Maharashtra was thought to have affected the water flow in the river and water availability to the Sriram Sagar project except during above 20% excess monsoon i.e. one out of four years, years. A study has found that the delta is at a greater risk as the rate of sediment aggradation raising the level of the delta through sediment deposition no longer exceeds relative sea level rise. It further states that the suspended sediment load at the delta has reduced from 152 million tons during 1970 to 1979 to 57 2 million tons by 2000 to 2006, which translates into a three-fold decline in the past four decades. Impacts of this can be seen in destroyed villages like Upada in Godavari Delta, destruction of mangrove forests and fragmentation of shoreline, possibly a fallout of dam construction. Said to further epitomize the insensitivity towards Godavari, is the Polavaram project which is touted to be gigantic, both in terms of size and violations. Deemed as being pointless and politically driven, the project raises questions about environmental clearance, displacement of upstream human habitations, loss of forest cover, technicalities in the dam design which are said to play down flood threats and unsafe embankments. High alkalinity water is discharged from the ash dump areas of many coal-fired power stations into the river which further increases the alkalinity of the river water whose water is naturally of high alkalinity since the river basin is draining vast area of basalt formations. This problem aggravates during the lean flow months in entire river basin. Already the Godavari Basin area in Telangana is suffering from high alkalinity and salinity water problem which is converting soils into unproductive sodic alkali soils. The following are the few coal-fired power stations located in the river basin. In popular culture One of the ships of the Indian Navy has been named Inns Godavari after the river. Godavari is also the codename of some variants of AMD Apu chips. <laughs> See also